thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's all, <laughs> Canada, I love that place. You know, Canada and I have a special affinity. Not that we, I don't have an affinity for all of you non-Canadians. But uh, I spent a few years in Canada, in Alberta. My family actually lived on the farm there very early on. And, and uh, there's something about Canada that you can never really remove from you once it's there. You guys have heard of, you know, viruses and things like that, but I think there's a, I think there's a Canada virus that sort of gets inside you. It's very, very easy for you and helpful and beneficial and fun, but nevertheless, it's a lot like an infection. <laughs> really, um, I'm not going to spend any time talking about me. I, it's not really important. I want to just mention uh, Simon, who was just up here. I've known Simon since he was like 15 years old, hanging around. And, you know, he's always been an energetic, focused, not really noisy fellow, but he's always got a purpose and always pursuing it. And I think in his position now as the COO, with all of that history that he's got, you guys should be really happy with what you see there. And he's a, a perfect partner for our new CEO, Kendra, who also is a natural member of the family, came up through the family. And with that family bond, that never changes. People have said to me while I've been here, oh, it's good to see you're back. And I said, do you have a mirror or something? No, 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 it's good to see that you're back. And I said, well, I never really left because you can leave a job, but you can never leave a family. When are you not somebody's brother or sister in a family? Forever and ever, so I'm not back, I'm just here. <clears throat> I was given a, a, a task, and I love tasks, so this one may be impossible, to try to summarize the science behind your business and where it's been, where it's at, and where it's going. Because it's a big thing, it's very dynamic. It's something that built up energy and momentum over decades, and is moving us forward into the future, maybe in ways you don't even realize. In ways that where we are doing things, or things that we have been doing for many years are now being embraced, at the highest levels of medical and academic science. So I want to take you on a little journey. I want to tell you about our product line. Let me see here. No, that didn't work. So is there a way I advance this slide? Because I'd like to, oh, wait a minute. When in doubt, push the one that points that way. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I want to talk about the science. I didn't check this out. Um, I want to talk about the science, and it's really hard to do because you guys don't know what you're letting yourself in for if you let me up here to talk about the science. You know, you could come back from dinner, I'd still be talking, and I'd only be through the first decade or so. Right? So what I've tried to do is summarize it in three succinct words and take you on a little journey of what those words represent. First of all, neolife science is revolutionary. Okay. Secondly, it is evolutionary. And thirdly, it is extraordinary, extraordinary. Okay, so let me tell you what I mean about revolutionary. Whoop, wrong button, here we go. Think about this for a moment. Way back in 1958, this company was founded on the idea that taking care of your cells was important. That nutrients that were supposed to be in your diet that were being stripped out by the industrialization of the food supply were undermining health and vitality. And when you put those back, guess what? The cells work better. Now, today we say, okay, yeah, good, that's good. You know, everybody says, yeah, everybody says, yep. Even the most skeptical say it's all about cells. But in 1958, that was not just unusual, that was a revolutionary idea. Because we were right at the early stages of the industrialization of our society and the industrialization of the food supply. So the trend was not going that direction, the trend was going the wrong direction. It was going away from caring for the basic foundations of our health and towards making things easy and convenient and giving them shelf lives that lasted for years and years. Something that, you know, has never occurred before that time. But here we were, a little tiny company, focusing on this idea of whole food nutrition affecting cells and cell main membrane function in a way that revolutionized the concept. Now, revolutions don't always go bang and it's over, okay? Revolutions take time. 
revolutions go on over time. And actually, those are the best kind of revolutions to have, because if it's a flash in the pan, it's not a revolution. It's a flash in the pan. A revolution is where you actually change the thinking process, where you actually influence the direction of society's movement in a way that brings you to a better place. And that's what this did. For all of those people that got around neo-life at that time and embraced these ideas and grabbed that revolution and carried that revolutionary banner forward, it improved their lives tremendously. And everybody that they touched with that information improved their lives. And that's part of our scientific heritage. Another revolutionary aspect of our science behind your business, the science behind neo-life, is the formation of the Scientific Advisory Board. Now, I run into people all the time. They say, well, I met this company, and the guy on the plane said they had a Scientific Advisory Board, too. So what? OK. Everybody's got one today. You know why every one of our competitors has got a Scientific Advisory Board? Because they can't compete with us without it. They, ours started way back in 1976. OK, way back in 1976. In 1976, Nobody else had a scientific advisory board. And it was started by a guy who was recognized then and is certainly recognized now as well as one of the great minds of modern science, one of the great minds of the last century, Dr. Arthur First. And when he brought his principles to the company and his philosophies about health protection is more important than health correction, that the process of keeping the people healthy or keep making people healthy, is to keep them healthy first, not to try to receive the, retrieve them from the abyss. Okay, not that that doesn't happen, and that's an important thing, and you undoubtedly see and hear in your own businesses situations like that. But he was focused on this idea of taking a company and just making it about empowering people with knowledge, empowering people with tools, and changing the future. And that continues on today. That is part of the revolution. So it's easy for me to talk about that, those two things, in the context of it being revolutionary, because they didn't exist before. The change was counter to what was going on in the marketplace and the culture at the time. Yet it's taken and continues to bring people to this new paradigm of thinking that says health first, right? Health first for me. Health first for you, health first for your teams, health first for your families, health first for the country, health first for the world. That's the only way that we're going to solve the crises that we're confronted with in things like chronic disease. It starts with us. So now let's talk a little bit about evolution. Evolutionary science is when you create an idea or a technology, you don't just sit on it and say, well, that was nice, we're done. You know, there's this old rule in marketing Right? The easiest way, if, if, if you don't revolutionize or renew or regenerate your product, your consumer will come, your competitor will come along and take it from you. And one of the things that we practice in the Scientific Advisory Board is staying at the very front of what's going on in the scientific community. And by doing that, we are able to evolve the things we know, to continue to improve them, in a way that allows us not only to produce better products with better results with better clinical trials, but allows us to bring things to you that no other company can talk about. Because if we weren't doing this, if we weren't constantly working on what we've already finished, if we weren't constantly trying to improve, we would stop. You know, if you're not growing, you're what? Same thing happens in the scientific world. If you are not growing and learning, you are dying. So here's a few things. Protein instantizing. Way back in the 1960s when we introduced protein, very important. The protein raw materials were, by modern standards, not really very sophisticated. They were dry and dusty and things like that. So we, the process of taking these protein materials and making them into something that you can mix in water or milk or whatever and drink and have it taste good was one of the fundamental things that was developed right here in our company. It's called protein instantizing. Okay, means that it instantly disperses into the product. Now, we didn't do that with chemists. Well, we didn't do that with chemicals. We did it with natural things like lecithin and other natural emulsifiers that play those roles in nature's plan. 
But as we continue to refine and develop that, we learn more and more about protein, and we ultimately developed what's called the protoguard process as an evolutionary step. The protoguard process is a way of handling proteins in very specific ways that keep them from becoming denatured, that maximize their nutritional value, maximize their um, functional integrity, and do it in a way that enables this product to do amazing things in people's lives. Now you take proteins back here. We take for granted that you can take this wonderful powdered stuff. You can put it in water. You can put it in juice. You can put it in milk. You can mix it up. And even your little kids will go, ooh, that's good, you know, which is what my grandkids do when they come over. Ooh, that's good, Papa. What are you drinking today, Papa? I'm drinking vanilla with blueberries in it. Can I have a sip? And I'm lucky to get the cup back. But those sorts of things we take for granted, but this is us doing those things. No one else has got the protoguard process. No one knows what it is. I'm not sure they want to spend the money to find out either, because it wasn't easy, and it took us years, years and years. You can't go back in time and start making, reinvest in making your investments now. Our competitors cannot go back 40 years and say, we'd like to invest in this. It's impossible. So we, again, have this situation where evolution is important. Another one is the artificial stomach. The artificial stomach is a tool that went from being something we did in the laboratory to something that is generally embraced throughout the, the um, nutritional and pharmaceutical communities as a way to evaluate how things work in your body. We didn't think that it was just enough to make a tablet and say, there you go, that's good, it's in there. Okay. We wanted to know what happens to that tablet when it gets in your body, because ultimately we want it to be beneficial. So in order for it to be beneficial, we have to understand what happens. So initially we used this as a research and development tool to determine things like disintegration. When the tablet gets in your stomach, does it disintegrate? Yeah, hopefully. Does it dissolve? Hopefully. Does it disperse? And we kept working with that and working with that and working with that, where it became every single one of our products then had to do those things. When they get in your stomach, they had to disintegrate, dissolve, and disperse. So that when it enters the upper intestine, it's maximal bioavailability. So that's what we call the artificial stomach. Later on, that technology taught us how to do threshold control. Threshold control technology, I don't think you'd understand how important that is, but it's not just sustained release, which are or timed release, it's actually releasing a nutrient into the gastrointestinal region, the stomach, into the gastrointestinal fluid, and having it reach and sustain a level over time. Not go too high, not go too low, but get into the threshold so it creates the maximal bioavailability of that nutrient over a long period of time for that user. Particularly important in water-soluble nutrients like vitamin C and vitamin B family, which is why you see it applied that way. Those sorts of developments took us to gel guard technology. As we continued to work, we found that there are things that you can put into the gastrointestinal tract that actually, in the presence of the acid, actually form an acid-resistant gel. This is new to the world at the time we're discovering this. But we say, what a great delivery system. It's made from potato starch. Then if you're trying to get something through the gastrointestinal tract, through the, the gastric region of the stomach, through the stomach acid and into the intestinal tract where it does its job, what a great transport vehicle. So we developed what we call gel guard technology. And it's about that. It's using what we learn from artificial stomachs and all of these things in our laboratories to produce a delivery system that is totally unique to us. That enabled us to move on to this concept of targeted delivery. Now we can actually make things that you can swallow. They go through your acid. They're, resi they're resistant to the acid of the stomach. They arrive not just in the intestine, but they arrive in a specific region of the intestine where they are released. We know certain things are absorbed at certain regions in the intestinal tract. So don't you think that would be the place to deliver them? It's like you don't want your mailman to deliver your mail three doors away, do you? So if you're trying to get something where it needs to be, you need to put it where it needs to be. And that technology is what you see here. It's called targeted delivery. You see it on our digestive supplements and acidophilus and things like that. Glycemic response control, another hugely important neolife difference. Okay? 
very, very powerful. It allows us to understand how carbohydrates enter the body and to manage that, not so much because we want to manage the carbohydrates, but because by managing the carbohydrates and how they enter, we can bias your body towards burning fat for energy. We can also diminish your demand for insulin, which is important because elevated insulin is a problem, and if you happen to be diabetic, you might not have enough anyway. Very important. Brought us along, we evolved to this technology of molecular differentiation. You know, if you go in the marketplace, omega-3 fatty acids, they'll say, oh, mine's distilled. It's, distil it's done by distillation. It's fatty acid distillation. Okay. You know, we've been distilling things for about 2,000 years. Okay. It's how monks used to make wine, right? And people used to make wood alcohol and things like that to hurt themselves. <laughs> But the, 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 anybody can do that because it's isolating one thing. We have known for years, before we introduced Salmon Oil Plus, that there were eight omega-3 fatty acids involved in human nutrition. But identifying those is one thing. It's another thing to be able to isolate them and make sure that they're there in a very specific amount, put that into a gelatin capsule and deliver it to you so you can consume it, and then we can take a little sample of your blood and we can show that they're all there because if it doesn't get in your blood, it isn't going to do you any good. And not just EPA and DHA like the competitors, but all eight of these things get into our bloodstream. Okay. That sort of technology, that's an evolutionary process. The result of this is extraordinary things, extraordinary in our industry, extraordinary not when I say our industry, I just don't mean the MLM direct selling industry, I mean the entire health and nutrition industry. Extraordinary things, extraordinary human clinical evidence came from this process. The things that you see here don't represent all of them, but these are human clinical trials. I'm not gonna take you through, but you guys know them. Carotenoid complex, protects your heart, defend your cells, boost your immune system. That was us and the US Department of Agriculture and researchers from the CDC and so on. Flavonoid complex and cruciferous plus. Because of our reputation for excellence and the things we do, we got invited to participate in a National Cancer Institute trial where it proved that these products actually intercede in the carcinogenic process and either inhibit it from happening in cells or, should it happen, slow the progression. It also showed that these products have the ability, our products have the ability to upregulate, that's increase, your cell's natural ability to protect itself. Wow. That, that, you know, I don't know that you know how big a wow that is, okay? That's a gigantic wow, because when you can actually have proof that your product makes every one of the cells in your body more capable of protecting itself, just that step means that you've helped yourself and others tremendously. Glycemic response control, I told you about. I won't go through that again. Salmon Oil Plus human clinical trial that not only showed that it was bioavailable, but showed that right at the very forefront of medical research, things like the inflammatory index, which is a series of markers in your body that we know represent the rate at which you age and your probable future risk of disease, to know that we can influence those that dramatically through this human clinical trial. And NeoLife Shake. You know, a simple sort of evolution of all of our years of protein technology resulting in a product that not only helps you lose weight and build cells and develop lean muscle mass, but also turns out to be cardioprotective, protecting your heart and cardiovascular system. Really, really big things. In the scientific community, these are huge. We get a lot of attention. We get invited to go to these things. We get people who want to do things with us which is another part of the extraordinary story behind neolife science. It's this thing that you see right here, the world's best research with the world's best research partners. Everything that you see on that slide is either represents researchers who have done research directly on our products, like USDA and CDC, researchers that have participated with us in doing things on our products, us doing things on our product, and having those things we do, the level of the science that's behind the product be so well accepted that they're willing to not only embrace it, but go around and allow us, and indeed themselves, promote the benefits of what our products provide. Okay, when the USDA proved that our product, I should say it the way they want me to say it, when researchers from the USDA proved that, our, that the agency doesn't like us to suggest that the whole agency stopped and approved it. 
but they acknowledged that researchers from the U.S. Department of Agriculture proved that our product could enhance your immune system as much as it did in just 20 days. You know what they did? They went all over the world standing in front of audiences of their peers, researchers, saying, we did this study, and look what we found. And isn't that amazing? And look what that means to the population. And oh, wow, well, we're going to do more of this. And down at the bottom, down at the bottom, it says, oh, by the way, give the credit to the Neolife Company of America because it's their product. You guys ever read that? You ever get that thing and read it? Look on the third page of the study and you can see, thank you to the Neolife Company of America. Now, that almost makes me feel good about paying tax when the government agencies <laughs> get that done, but not quite. But all of these things you see, these are things that we're involved in. You don't get to walk into these places and say, hi, we're here, here's a bunch of money, let us play. That isn't the way it works in the scientific community. You have to earn your way in. If you think, if you think your potential customer is skeptical, come talk to my potential customer, the other scientists in the world. They're not only skeptical, Sometimes they're intransient. They just can't move because they can't bring themselves to recognize that they've been going down the wrong path for so long. Another extraordinary thing here is the extraordinary amount of proof. There's a difference between our company and all the companies out there, the other companies out there. There's a difference between what you get to say and what your competitors get to say. At least there's a difference between what you get to say legally and factually and what your competitors might say. Now the difference is summarized right here in these, these journals. This is just some of the journals that have had publications about the power of Neolife products in them. Just some of the journals. Most companies in our industry would die to have one of these. Right? They would be doing cartwheels to have one of these. But look at this. This isn't even all of them. Couple American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, Carotenoids in Human Health, FASEB, da da da. But because of that, the, probably the most important one there is down there in the bottom where it says the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, that's one of the three primary peer reviewed, leading edge medical journals in the world. And in that particular journal that you see there, they talked about the importance of omega 3 fatty acids for long term eye health. A, a, uh, uh, a lady named Dr. Emily Chu, who is the director of the uh, National Institute of Health's um, Division of o Ocular Health, or Ophthalmologic Health, I think they call it, but Vision Health, wrote an article in there that said, oh, well, we've been looking at the, all this research, and we think that everybody in the country would be smart to take three omega-3 fatty acid capsules every day, at least a gram of omega-3 fatty acids every day, which is three of our capsules. Okay. And in there, she cited, here's the reasons why. One, two, three bits of research. Two of those bits of research were sort of funny little animal studies that had been done to rats and, and uh, rabbits, maybe, I think was the other one. One study was done on humans, and that was ours. It was our clinical study that our scientific advisory board, Dr. Karugi, and a fellow named Dr. Karsten Gronert at, Gronert at UC Berkeley got together and did this. And it was such compelling research that it got mentioned in the New England Journal of Medicine as a why, reason why everybody should take omega-3s every day. Now, I don't know about you all, but that's the kind of thing that gives me goosebumps. Okay, that's the kind of thing that gets me and the rest of the scientific advisory board and in fact our entire global product science and technology network, which is much bigger than you ever get to see. There's a lot of people involved in this thing. It's a really, really powerful thing. But the result of this, a few things to keep in mind. First of all, Neolife products are unique and exclusive. No one else has got them. No one else has got them. So right away, you're in a commanding position. Never, ever compare your product to others. Always compare others to yours. Hold yours up as the standard and say, OK, I think this is important. Let's look at your omega-3 or your protein or your carotenoid or whatever it is. And if you just go through the list, you'll find that they're going to fail. Even big competitors that we see as being big and powerful will fail in that criteria simply because they don't do things the way we do. They don't care the way we do. They don't have the history that we have. They don't have the commitment that we have.
They haven't stuck to the path. Maybe they weren't even on the path until last week. And they might not even be on it then. Scientifically proven benefits. You know, all of those journals and all that science, you know what that means when you go out and talk to people and they say, oh, my immune system's terrible. You can say, I've got a product that will boost your immune system and it won't be theory. It won't be based on somebody else's research or somebody else's thought. It won't be a theory whether or not these might help you. It's proven, it's a fact that carotenoid complex will help you. It's a fact that salmon oil plus will reduce your risk of long-term disease and correct your inflammatory balances. These are clinically proven facts. And I think the power of a fact is when you wield that fact, you can really bring it home to people because you don't have to sort of hum and haw and guess about things. You just go out and say, this is gonna work, this is for you. Don't trust me, look at the evidence. It's huge. Other things like a long time ago we convinced the company that they had to take the words natural and organic off the label. Because they used to be right at the top of the label. Some of the older neolifers will know it. And it was not a very hard decision or conversation because the scientific advisory board said, here's what we know. We know that the word natural is very powerful and out in the industry there's a whole bunch of people taking unnatural things and modifying them in ways so that under the labeling laws they can call them natural. So things like Blake's Lea trispora, okay? Blake's Lea trispora is an asexual fungus, okay? You can torment that just right and produce, raw material, uh, produce a raw material that would be considered to be natural carotenoids. But it's not natural, it's never been part of the human food chain. It's actually not the same molecule, but because it's made from an organism that exists naturally, that isn't a man-made organism, Blake's Lea trispora has been here for a long, long time, um, it's natural. And there were lots of examples like that. So we said the problem is that natural isn't gonna mean anything. And the same thing with organic. I won't go into the presentation, but organic is not a scientific standard. Organic is a set of sub uh, subjective standards established by a group of people that are paid to establish that and can be influenced by the power of the food conglomerates in this country. If you want to get your organic standard on your thing, you just go find the guy that's doing the most organic standards and you say, Frank, we'd like you to come talk to us. We're having a convention down in some place, you know, Texas or wherever, and why don't you come down and tell us about how this organic thing works? Might people really be interested? And uh, oh, by the way, we'll spend, we'll uh, charge you 50 grand, well, we'll pay you 50 grand for that. Scientific standards cannot be manipulated by anybody. Scientific standards are, you know, scientific standards. If you analyze something and it says that there's five milligrams there, guess what? There's five milligrams there. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at the machine that's doing the analysis, the data doesn't change. That's a scientific standard, but in this case, organic is something that is subjective. An article in Boston, uh, or the uh, Washington Post a few years ago, pointed out that the USDA had found that a lot of that was going on, that the people that established the standards and qualified products were all over the map. And finally, we represent solutions for modern health challenges. Right now, the biggest problem confronting everybody on the planet, doesn't matter your background, your, your, where you grew up, what school you went to, what color your skin is, what religion you believe in, whatever. The basic underlying biochemistry is the same, and it is under assault. The biochemistry of every single person on this planet is under assault. It's under assault from two things. First of all, it's under assault from this huge amount of industrialized food products that have worked their way into our lives and have been promoted and purported as being something that sustains us when in fact it does not. It actually erodes us. It is those things and the absence by being literally driven out of the food supply of critical nutrients and the combination of those two things, the uh, overabundance of the bad stuff and the lack of the good stuff is driving a health crisis that has the opportunity to breach us all. Every single society, every single person. But the good news is, when I say that we have modern solutions, I want you to take a moment, I'm gonna do a little history for you. When we started talking about cell membranes and lipids and sterols and carotenoids and omega-3s and cruciferous compounds and flavonoid compounds and 
you know, polyphenols and proteins and 22 amino acids and all this stuff. You know what? Most people in the scientific and medical community thought we were nuts. They said, no, 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 you don't need that. Just, you know, you don't need it. Don't worry about nutrition. You don't need it. Don't worry about it. Those people are nuts. Okay. So over the years, we continued to be nuts. Okay. We continued to stick right with our nutty plan and our nutty statements and did things in our nutty way. Okay. And you know what happened? As we've been holding our position and our belief systems, they've all migrated towards us. We have become mainstream. Did you know that? Now, how appropriate is that when you stay the course and keep committed to what you believe in? How appropriate is that, that we have changed the world, that they have come to us? And I don't just mean our industry, I mean us. Here's an example, I'm gonna give you an example. Okay, this is a screen scrape off the Stanford website. And I brought this along because it's important, I think, for you to see just where we are today. Okay, it says nutrition services for cancer patients. This is their recommendations. Basically, they say, and you can read it, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but they say basically if you want to protect yourself from cancer or while you are going through fighting cancer, here's some things that you should maximize the presence of these things in your diet. Stanford, okay, I know these folks well. We've talked to them for years, and I think the light finally has gone off in their heads. So look what they say, sources of phytochemicals, and this is just a phytochemical. They do a thing about proteins and so on as, as well, but sources of phytochemicals. Allison. Allicin is the active compound in garlic, and it's the thing that we've determined and confirmed is present in garlic allium complex, and through our targeted delivery technology, we can deliver it right to where it's needed in the gastrointestinal tract. Next, you can see anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are a type of flavonoid. They're in flavonoid complex. They're in tray. Next one down is bioflavonoids. That's a flavonoid found in fruits and vegetables. You find it in tray and you find it in our vitamin C products. Next is carotenoids. I don't need to tell you where those are. Next is flavonoids in general. Don't need to tell you where those are. Next is indoles. Indoles are those compounds that you find in cruciferous vegetables that in that uh, National Cancer Institute study showed that they were protective against breast cancer. Isoflavones, they're present in tray, and they're present in our soya protein products, right? Those are soy-derived isoflavones. They're protective. I know you get a lot of flack from people who are misinformed about soy, but Stanford thinks they're good for you even when you're fighting cancer, okay? Lignans. Lignans are a type of fiber that's present only in whole grain fiber sources. If you use other than whole grain fiber sources, you're not going to get any. So guess what we use? Whole grain fiber sources. Okay, lutein down there. That's a carotenoid. Up at the top, lycopene is a carotenoid. You're in carotenoid complex, right? Phenolics. Those are the polyphenols that are present in tray and flavonoids and things like that. Now, you can look at the foods and so on and so forth, but basically Stanford just took us for a walk through our product line. Okay. And we didn't have to pay him a penny. But you know, I actually interact with some of these people at Stanford still. And what happens is when you work with the younger people that are coming up, and we give away a lot of scholarships and things like that, they buy into our ideas because they're, they're not trapped by the old, un, old learnings of ancient times. They're right at the leading edge and evolving. And that, through those sorts of things, we have been able to influence where science is going. That revolution we started that produced that evolution of products and technologies is continuing. And it's resulted in extraordinary things. Nobody in our industry can say this. Nobody in our industry can say anything about their product line that even resembles this. So now, where do you think we're going tomorrow? I just told you where we've been and where we are. Where do you think we're going tomorrow? Would you like to know where we're going tomorrow? Okay. Okay, if you see a little red dot appear on my chest, it'd be because I'm telling you too much. No. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, let me, let me tell you what's going on. Remember I started by saying this whole machine is vital and dynamic, it's huge. We've got dozens and dozens and dozens of people scattered all over the world whose job is to get up every day and continue to move this machine forward. It's not just a scientific advisory board, it's not just me. It's part of our 
culture. It's part of the way we do things. We commit energy and time and money to making the machine move forward. So based upon what you see in the past and where we are in the present, you would be mistaken to assume that anything different is going to be happening in the future because it's not going to change. We are going to continue. We have a whole pipeline full of product excellence coming your way. Okay, not going to tell you what they are now because that's when the little red dot shows up. But I'm going to tell you what they're going to do. These products are going to broaden our market penetration. They're going to allow you to go out and touch people in ways that you can't now. And they're going to feel not only you when you touch them, but they're going to feel the benefits of these new products when they take them. They're going to create new markets where markets don't exist today. You're going to go get to introduce things to people that you're not talking about today, but it's going to be so well woven into what you know that it will be a natural extension of the stories and the information you give now. Okay, really important. We're going to stretch the boundaries of health knowledge. There's things that we are doing that are really right out of the fringe, just like has always been. We have not stopped being nuts. Okay, <laughs> nuts is a good place to be. Okay, we are actually going to bring products that are going to slow and reverse biological aging. Because you know, Chronological age means nothing, right? It's just how many times the Earth has revolved around the sun. If you move to a place where that took twice as long, you'd be half as old as you are. Right? <laughs> Louie got it. You guys get that? <laughs> okay. So really, how many times a planet circles the sun has got nothing to do. Really what you want to focus on is your biological age. Something the SAB has been looking at for a long time is not only understanding what biological age is, but to develop markers for biological age. And once you do that, then you can begin to develop products that influence that process. And we're going to be able to actually back people up in terms of their biological age. We are going to fortify and enhance the energy of life itself. You know, we're all about cellular energy and so on. Well, you know, in membranes, the outside of cell membranes is really, really important, fundamental. Well, that will never change. But what goes on inside those cells and what goes insi on inside certain portions of those cells and even the membranes within other things, organelles that are within the cell, those sorts of events we've been looking at very deeply and we're going to bring you a product that's going to knock your socks off. Okay. <laughs> Finally and most importantly, we're going to empower you guys even more because we're just behind the scenes, right? We're not the ones that get the job done. We're not the ones that are going out and going to go out and create this grassroots change in mentality to take the millions and millions of people out there who seem to be sane and turn them into nuts. Okay, because they're going to think you're nuts, but when they're going to realize that nuts is okay, nuts is good. Matter of fact, if I'm a little crazy, it's a lot easier to be sane, right? So we're going to do that. We're actually going to do that. We're going to empower you in a way that you can go out and help us end the trend. Okay. The most important thing going on in this world today, besides raising our children and keeping our freedom, is ending the chronic disease trend. And not only do you get to participate in it, you get to be champions of it. And the company and the scientific advisory board and the full might of our global science and technology system and team will be behind you every step of the way. Thank you very much. <laughs>